Okay, so uh, welcome to the Bookmap webinar. Uh, risk disclaimer, trading equities and futures involves substantial risk of loss, is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Uh, more information, go to bookmap.com. If you're a member, you get free resources, and then reach out to us at support at bookmap.com. Uh, here is the website. Uh, and if you scroll down under the pricing tab, this is where you can find Bookmap if you want to give it a try. You get a 14-day trial period with uh, either version here. Now, there's just two versions. There's the basic and the advanced. Now, the basic and advanced over here are packaged with DX feed, which uh, allows uh, it's the data feed. We're not a data provider, but we will. Uh, we've uh, partnered with DX feed to offer the data for U.S. equities. So if you're interested in that, you can get the package deal. Now, you can still get DX feed with the bookmap basic or advanced. You just add it on yourself. Okay, so you, you actually have a little more flexibility with the, uh, adding it here at, with the basic or advanced. Uh, the differences between the two, uh, you can um, uh, see them all here for the most part. Uh, the one-click trading from the chart and uh, all of these add-ons. If you scroll down just a little bit further here, you can also see the complete list in comparison if you click on that link. Okay, and then you can see the entire list here of what, what you're getting for each different version. Okay. There's also a quant uh, version, or not version, but it has it's the same bookmap version, uh, it just has different features. Okay, so if you're uh, if you're a quant uh, or uh, you trade very very frequently with uh, uh, your uh, algorithmic uh, you know automated trading, uh, you might want to look into some of those features. Okay. All right, uh, in the bookmap portal area, if you click on that link here, that'll take you here, okay? For those of you uh, in trial, you'll see your product information here. Uh, there's also features, education, uh, videos to take a look at, and um, uh, some uh, some other information down here, okay? Now, you can also just follow us on Twitter. You'll get the most updated information here. Uh, and then our YouTube page, this is where you're gonna find all of the videos as well. Uh, and um, uh, you can uh, see all of the recorded webinars here uh, as well. Okay, so uh, this is just the intro video here. There's the features and components playlist, so you can click on the link here or watch each one here and then, you know, scroll to the right. Uh, or um, I go down a little further, I highly recommend uh, you guys watch these as many as you can or just start with one and digest it, digest the information here. Very short videos on order flow phenomena that we see during these webinars, and we cover them in detail here in the webinars, though. Uh, so this is the quicker version. Uh, again, there are many of these videos. There are like 80 of them or, or, or so. Um, and uh, educational course, we have our book map one through four, uh, part four of our educational course. Uh, and then the recorded webinars are uh, below that, okay? And we also included uh, Futures Trader 71. He's a bookmap user, and uh, you might want to watch the way that he uses bookmap for his trading, okay? So that's our YouTube page. You can also click on the playlist here and get all the information here. Uh, and, um, uh, and then sign up for that trial, okay? So uh, absorb the... Um, uh, the knowledge uh, with uh, in the content there, uh, but then uh, using bookmap replay mode, for example, or just looking at the live markets uh, uh, during the trial, uh, that's where you're really going to uh, uh, learn uh, quite a bit more. Okay, so uh, let's see, Scott, you're asking about the quant uh, subscription. Well, I, I would just say, um, uh, why don't you uh, uh, click on the link here uh, to begin with, and uh, and you can. Um, I'll find out more about it there. Oops, no, sorry, that's something else. Okay, yeah, here is a list, and uh, uh, just go go through and, and take a look. Uh, you, you'll see it down uh, down here. Uh, uh, your your data connection, uh, you know, being able to this kind of in test environment uh, and understanding exactly how your your algos are are working. Okay. No, it's for for anybody. It's and you you know a lot of the um, uh, quants will they want to look at their own data sets. 
So, uh, you know, it's, it's set up, uh, the, the features are a little different. All right. Okay. Well, let's jump in and take a look at book map. Okay. Uh, we'll continue looking at oil. I mean, uh, S and P is, uh, is not really, uh, uh hasn't been moving very much. Uh, so, uh, it's kind of doldrums and liquidity in oil has been more like the S and P. So, uh, <laughs> which has kind of curbed some of the uh, volatility for sure. Uh, but, uh, it's still moving better than the, uh, than, than other, uh, uh instruments. Uh, NASDAQ has been a mover for sure, but um, uh, let's stick with oil and uh, we'll, we'll take a look here. Uh, uh, good morning, Francisco. Yeah, we'll take a look at uh, Amazon as well. We could jump into a stock and take a look here. Okay, you, You're going to see this looks a lot more foreign uh, compared to the futures. And uh, that's because the stocks are, uh, you know, I mean, look at the price here, the price ladder. Okay, So we're looking at dollars here. Uh, so there are, you know, there's, there's 10 ticks in between here. Um, uh, or, you know, now if we start to zoom in here, okay. All right. So, uh, you know, between each cent here, so I'm sorry, a hundred ticks in, in between, um, you, you can see that, you know, there's still each cent. So, you know, the spread here is 15 cents uh, wide. And, uh, that's what this dark area is in between it is the spread. Okay. Anyway, I'll get it. I'll get into it. But as you can see now, I mean, this is, you know, it looks very foreign, but this is a true representation of what the markets really are. I mean, there's a spread uh, and just uh, just the best bid and offer that alone already gives you a lot of uh, insight to what's going on here. OK, how these markets actually trade. And uh, I have not come across anything uh, that is object as objective as Bookmap is. It really gives you that, that complete picture. There's there's really no transparency here. Uh, I mean, this is the current state of Amazon, uh, and uh, that's the current state here. And then this is that recent historical. Anyway, let's jump back to oil and let's go th over what Bookmap is. All right, uh, and um, let's uh, for you new guys, uh, let's uh, we're going to put some candlesticks on. We're going to take off the dots. Uh, we're going to take off everything here uh, on the uh, on the chart except for those candlesticks, and we do have a volume sub column here, okay, um, and uh, or sub chart, okay. So let's see here. Uh, we're looking at a five minute candlestick chart here in uh, in oil, uh, and most of us are very familiar with this, okay. Uh, we can see the uh, uh, the wick here. There was some, you know, looks like there's some buying pressure coming into the market, presses the, the market up. Uh, we're outside of a new range here and kind of go sideways and it's back and forth and back and forth and then more buyers step in and then we're kind of in a new range and, and it's back and forth and back and forth. Now that's good. I mean, uh, you know, candlesticks, I, I like them. I have nothing against them. Uh, it's just that uh, if you look at this, uh, there's a lot missing here. Uh, and uh, uh, really uh, the problem here is we're making financial decisions uh, based on 5% of the uh, data here uh, within a candlestick. And there's so much more that can give us much more insight uh, to a much better uh, uh, financial decision uh, in the markets. Okay, so uh, let's uh, let's cover that, uh, and the, we'll we'll uh, I'll show you here uh, what the problem is, and then uh, how it's overcome. Okay, so let's uh, first stick the uh, historical best bid and offer on here. Okay, so there's all all sorts of stuff that just with the historical best bid and offer that we're going to see uh, a spread, for example. Okay, now oil we usually it's you know, uh, pretty, uh, uh, you usually don't get a, a much of a spread, maybe a tick or two every now and then, but, um, usually it's just a tick wide. Okay. You saw 15 cents there in Amazon. Uh, so, uh, uh, that's one of the things. Okay. But we can also start to understand microstructure just by looking at historical best bid and offer, uh, and start to understand the speed of the market as well. Uh, and all of that's going to be lost and diluted within a five minute, within any period uh, of a candlestick, okay? Because it's only recording that that one period of time. Uh, anyway, so let's uh, let's start to add more information on here, okay? Because the, the next problem to go over 
uh, the problem here is we, we don't know where the transactions are taking place on this candlestick chart. Okay, we have no idea. Uh, we can see though uh, in the subchart we have the volume, okay, and that's good, that's helpful. Uh, but uh, still, we, we have uh, volume that's separated from where it traded on the candlestick. Okay, the real real big distinction here. Okay, those of you who uh, trade uh, uh, footprint uh, charts, I anyone using a footprint chart out there or following the um, uh, uh, you know volume profile uh, trading? Because uh, footprint charts are, are great. I, I have nothing against them as well, uh, except that there's a problem uh, with the data there. Again, it, it's similar to the candlesticks. It's aggregated. Okay, So, you, you know, you'll see on the footprint chart where the volume traded within that five-minute period. Okay, but that's it. Right. Instead, uh, we're going to plot plot that um, uh, volume on the historical best bid and offer here. Okay. So that problem of aggregation is solved here uh, in Bookmap. So let's uh, let's plot that volume. And there you go. So now uh, we have an understanding. Let's zoom into this uh, this uh, move to the downside here. Okay. All right. This is the five-minute period in question. Okay, between these two vertical dotted lines. Okay, look how uh, we have much more understanding of what happened within this five-minute period, other than this open high-low close and it closed down at the bottom. Okay, so now uh, we can see exactly that uh, we had a microstructure here. Okay, we see a sweep of the book here with aggressive selling. Okay, big uh, red dots, some green in here, but mostly red down into this area, and then we go sideways for a bit yet again, okay? And we have a retest right back to where we broke from. All of that is not seen in the candlestick, okay? It's all it's all diluted, okay? We have no clue about any of that on the, uh, on the candlestick chart. Here it is in book map though, okay? So our cluster of volume here, um, you know, this actually in, a, in the candlestick chart, this volume would be just over here, to be honest. So even the the, the uh, historical best bid and offer volume in Bookmap is giving you much more insight here, right? So now uh, we can see where that volume traded, when, uh, how much, and what type. Okay. So let me zoom in here, and I want to break apart because I'm going to show you that Bookmap it, we're not uh, aggregating any of this data. Although, you know, you see the pie display and it's it's aggregated graphically. As I start to zoom in, I pull apart every single trade and I'm showing you exactly what occurred here. Okay, We're down at microsecond level. We're looking at millions of seconds here. And look at this activity here. Okay, that is clearly algorithmic activity. Okay, so this is how these markets trade. We're trading against machines all day long. Right, so you can see how they're operating. You can you can see at this level here uh, every single market uh, event that took place. Okay, now we're not trading at these levels. Okay, so that that's uh, I mean if you want to uh, test your algo uh, and use some of those quant features I was mentioning, well this is going to be optimal. Uh, you're going to understand exactly what occurred. Okay, but for for us that uh, we're looking for other opportunities on higher time frames, we're still giving you the overall of what happened at this area here. As I start to zoom out and compress that timeline, uh, I'm aggregating visually, graphically, all this information. Okay, and and you can see it just continues to do that into a big dot. Right, and then here's our five-minute period. Okay. So now we know exactly what her happened here. Okay. Uh, this is, um, you know, unparalleled transparency into the market. Okay, and we can start to understand some of these microstructural areas here, uh, and uh, this is going to give you an advantage in your trading uh, because you're going to be able to understand uh, how uh, maybe we go sideways here, and let's say let's say they start to uh, lift that offer right right in this area here. Okay. With some aggressive buying, okay. They actually do that not here, but here. 
Okay, this is the advantage you're going to be getting here in book map. You're going to see that. You're going to be able to put this together. Uh, notice this microstructure and notice the aggressive buying, lifting the offer up out of this microstructural area. If you're aggressive, join in the party. Okay, where would where would my target be? I would be looking for uh, where we drop from. Maybe maybe this volume dot here. Okay, what uh, what price is this? This is. Uh, uh, 92, 48, 92. Okay, boom. There you go. Nice little scalp for. Uh, oh, let's say you got in here at uh, 85, uh, 86. Uh, so uh, seven, you know, seven or eight ticks, something like that. Okay, uh, r right off the bat. Okay, and and without a sweat. I mean, you you see it. Okay. Uh, anyway. Uh, so that's uh, the volume, and we haven't even gotten to yet what's going on outside of the transactions here. Okay, so let's go to the dome for that because most traders uh, they're going to be entering off of the dome, uh, and uh, uh, the dome here in Bookmap is uh, here the COB column, and uh, and this is uh, very very helpful. Uh, you know, for those of you uh, trading off the dome, uh, how many of you uh, uh, are actually uh, Familiar trading from the dome, or 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 you trade uh, exclusively from the dome? Any of uh, any of you out there that uh, just look at the dome and uh, uh, maybe a higher time frame chart, but uh, you know just looking at uh, some levels and then uh, and then go right to the dome? Okay, there's a lot of professional traders that do. Okay, anyone uh, anyone in here today? Just uh, very very curious. Uh, because those dome traders, um, Fifth Amendment, <laughs> yeah, uh, no, no, I mean, uh, it's, you know, there's there's a lot, it takes a long time to um, be able to read the dome. Uh, the, the dome is uh, is tricky, it's difficult. Uh, yeah, crickets. Um, well, you know, it, and there's good reason why. Uh, so uh, I'll cover it, okay? So here's our dome okay so this this mimics uh, it's it's very much uh, like a uh, traditional dome okay we have best bid and offer here okay we have our depth on the bid and our depth on the offer right at these price levels these numbers represent uh, co contracts liquidity okay so we can see and and this is the same uh, uh, column here set up to the right but it, it's set as uh, as bars okay bars only so uh, very quickly, I can I can see uh, in the book 1,500 contracts here, and you know, no surprise, it's at the figure 49. Okay, what about on the bid side? Boom, right here. Uh, so um, actually, that's uh, let's see something happened here. Okay, there we go. Um, so uh, this 80 uh, 1182 uh, right here. Okay, so this is actually giving me kind of funky. Okay. Uh, it's just a it's just a refresh here. Um, uh, so um, uh, any anyway, the um, uh, looking for that uh, high liquidity here uh, in the um, uh, let's just go to the current market and let's solve that. Wow. Okay. Continue to sell off here. That's too bad. Uh, yeah, I need to cover the, these candlesticks so you guys understand what you're looking at. Uh, but uh, immediately you can look at here the um, uh, and see that high liquidity. Uh, in the um, uh, in the dome and understand uh, which areas are some of the highest. Okay. okay actually, I'm, I'm going to have to uh, go over this with the uh, CTO. So I'm not quite uh, giving the uh, right representation here. Interesting. All right. So let's go back here. Okay. And let's look at this area again. Okay, so anyway, the um, uh, reading the dome is 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 very challenging because these numbers here you're gonna have to remember quite a bit, right? And what we're looking for in the dome uh, is we're looking to really optimize our entries, exits, and our trade management. Okay, we're looking for areas where there's high liquidity. Okay, how close is it? Uh, how aggressive is it? Is it far away? Uh, what about the areas around it? Uh, as you can see, that's a lot to start to comprehend. And then you're going to have to remember there was high liquidity here earlier. And then as we turn back there, are they back again? I want to know that. 
right? So it's, you know, you have to really focus in on the dome here. Uh, and, uh, and that's challenging because with the dome, it gives you a good uh, representation or no, it's not a representation. It is the current market state. Okay. However, uh, the, um, the problem here uh, is that uh, that current market state is, uh, uh, it's ephemeral. It's gone. Uh, it, it's fleeting. Uh, as soon as that, uh, these numbers change, it's a new current state. All right. So that happens all day long. So uh, that, that's a problem here because uh, you're going to have to, you know, uh, be kind of a, a human computer to start to memorize all of these areas. And it takes, it takes a while to develop those skills. All right. So um, let's turn on the heat map. Okay. So book map solves that problem here because we record this data. Okay. So areas of high liquidity uh, are giving a graphical representation in the book. All right. And we can see it. Okay. So uh, uh, if it's a, a very um, a high liquidity, well, then uh, it gets a very bright area. And we can adjust our heat map here uh, using the settings uh, to, um, uh, you know, uh, re really give some insight here. Okay. You can look at, you know, something like this uh, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, trying to, you know, you can look at every little subtle detail if you want. Uh, however, that, that becomes, again, very difficult to start to read, uh, even graphically, right? So uh, I don't find it helpful. And that's why we offer the, uh, the heat map settings here uh, to, uh, to play around with it just a little bit. And let's, uh, let's get rid of some of that noise. I want to focus in on just that high liquidity uh, that has significance uh, in the limit order book. And there we go. Uh, now we can see it. Okay. Uh, so uh, uh, the data here is recorded. Uh, it's transposed onto the chart. And now we can start to understand the areas here in subtle detail. So these striations right here, we can use our rollover tool. And we can go in and we can see that they started to uh, become aggressive on the bid side here. And in context, what about the area above, above it or below it? Well, they were aggressive. Uh, they, they started to add actually above. And that's showing bullish behavior. Okay? And they're adding in as price is coming down into that area. This is bullish. Okay? A uh, little bit of spoofing it looks like here. And, uh, and these guys actually, uh, the, the buyers took them on. Okay? And, uh, and traded into that. And, uh, you know, these guys, uh, I mean, we can see some of it pulled right when it, right when it came up into it, some of it pulled, but some of it remained. Okay. And then uh, as we scroll, we can see that we start to trade into that high liquidity here. Okay. And, uh, and then you can see the volume dots here and they pull a lot of it here, but uh, still we get, uh, you know, aggressive buying here. Uh, and what, what occurs? Okay. They start lifting the offer. Right, starts lifting the offer into that area we were targeting here uh, earlier. Okay, so uh, uh, you can now you can start to put to the this dome to use onto the chart historically, okay, and in real time. All right, so let's do that now. Let's take a look at the real, uh, you know, the live markets here, uh, and what are we seeing? Okay, okay, let me get to some of the questions. And boy, these volume dots are huge. So let's uh, let's bring that size down here. I'm just going to go to restore, and then I'll bring them down. Usually, that's the default is something like this. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, footprint charts compared to, to, to book map. Well, I mean, I like footprint charts, uh, but I, I don't like that it's aggregated. Uh, you know, now, now I can see really what's occurring here. Uh, in fact, you know, if, if you, you can, you, you can even kind of extrapolate the model here. Uh, let's, uh, you know, if you right-click in the uh, in a column here, uh, you can. There's different data types. 
and we do have a time and sales column here. In fact, we can pop it out um, and, and take a look at it here. Uh, and uh, so this is the time and sales. Now look at all these ones and, you know, uh, smaller trays that uh, zip through really quickly. Okay. Actually some size, some, you know, some size coming through now too. Uh, however, uh, uh, the, the, basically this is kind of like your graphical horizontal time and sales. Uh, as, as as this is scrolling through, we're seeing it plotted onto the chart. Uh, so we're getting not only the time and sales, uh, we're getting where uh, it took place uh, on the chart. So we have reference uh, to things. All right. So you can uh, you can use that as a um, uh, uh, you know kind of a, a, a conceptual model of uh, you know what what the what this is like the tape unfolding here in front of you. Uh, and, and watching those time and sales go by. Okay. Let's go back to a, a current uh, or a chart range volume profile. Okay. 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 So um, let's see here. All right. Well, let's let's see what's uh, what's what's unfolding now. So let's get to the current state of the market and uh, and start to um, uh, uh, objectively uh, uh, use bookmap here uh, within the live order flow. All right. So uh, we're showing up to this this auction, uh, and we want to know uh, the the in the dome here, like where are the majority of the players. Okay, forty eight ninety forty nine uh, and uh, and above. Okay, that's where they are with high liquidity on the offer okay what about on the bid well they're, they're down here okay now at this point i'm going to take the candlestick chart off it's just uh, uh getting kind of uh, uh distracting and in the way okay so uh where is this auction okay we're channeling between high liquidity here uh at uh, at set 4877 and 4890 okay how is that liquidity behaving okay that's that's the next question we want to know after we determine uh, the majority of the of the players here uh, in the auction, okay, uh, and um, uh, well, I mean, we haven't come down and really tested these guys yet, okay. We have come up here and kind of tested them, and uh, they stayed. I mean, some of it pulled, as you can see, it, it got a little lighter in these some of these areas, or a little darker in some of these areas here, okay. But uh, then, you know, they're they're staying here at at 48.90, okay. Now look at them, look at the behavior here, okay. They're getting more aggressive on the offer. Okay, they're lowering it. Okay, they're starting to chase. Okay, and uh, we just saw a little bit of algorithmic activity there, uh, and uh, maybe skewing the book, and uh, and then pulling of liquidity here. Okay, and uh, uh, that's the shorter term liquidity that's working price within this channel of longer term liquidity. Okay, and this is you can see it here. Okay, these little bright spots in here that high uh, liquidity but short term, and it's kind of working price back and forth, okay, along with the uh, the transactions and the volume, okay. But uh, these guys really don't mean business because they're, they're not in here for very long, okay. But this is more interesting here uh, at this uh, uh, 88 level, okay. They start to come in and they're staying in the book. That's longer term liquidity. Okay, this 90 level, certainly longer term liquidity. Okay, look at them now, drop it another couple of ticks lower here at 86 with high liquidity. Okay, so they're starting, we're starting to see it get built out here. Okay, uh, and, uh, and we're starting to understand that, uh, uh, you know, at, at this point, I mean, we're, we haven't come up and tested them yet, uh, but it's looking uh, like bearish, this is kind of bearish behavior here uh, in the limit order book. Okay. Okay, now they're starting to pull as we're coming up and testing them. Okay, so we can see, see we can start to understand, engage these areas here in this auction. So I don't, I'm not, I'm not so convinced of these guys at 88. And uh, 90 so far looks pretty good. Okay, the 88 is, uh, you know, they keep pulling uh, and uh, adding back in when price, uh, you know, goes away. Okay, now we're getting, look at the shorter term uh, aggressive uh, activity here on the uh, on the bid side. Okay. 
So um, uh, anyway, uh, this is, uh, uh, we're looking for uh, some sort of um, uh, uh, clarity here uh, and understanding of these players, okay? And uh, 88 is telling us that uh, they're not so interested, but 90 is uh, so far, they're, they're good. Okay, so um, uh, we haven't come up and tested uh, into 90, though, uh, as well. Okay, and uh, what about the transactions? Where are they taking place, and what kind are they? Well, uh, within this little um, uh, range here, uh, we can see that um, uh, for the most part, uh, we have, um, it's, it's, yeah, a little, bit, a little bit more positive than negative at the moment, okay, 4 or 5%. Okay, and we can just kind of look at the dots and the colors uh, and start to understand that. Now, if you want the exact uh, data, you can get that too with the rollover tip. We can hover over this dot and it tells us exactly the date, the time, what was on the ask at this price, and the volume that traded within this um, um, graphically um, uh, aggregated dot here. All right, okay, so look at the aggressive buying here. Now we're testing the 90 area, getting right to it. These 88 guys pull, that shouldn't be a surprise. And now we're we, we just uh, uh, traded into 90 and uh, we see large transactions here, okay? Okay, so uh, let's see if we get a flip of the book here at this moment, All right? We're looking for follow through now, uh, those aggressive buyers to pull price up into 49. There's our flip right there, okay? Notice that high liquidity was on the offer, it's on the bid now. Okay, and we're looking for those big green dots. Okay, they're pulling price up. Okay, this is uh, starting to break out of that range. Okay, this is how these breakouts occur. This is exactly how. Okay, and we were reading it here. All right, so look at the, let's go through that again and let's look at, uh, look at how that shorter term high liquidity, okay, we saw flip, okay, uh, here. Uh, and then, uh, but they didn't stay in for very long. In fact, they just, uh, it's got to be the, uh, you know, some, uh, a few players maybe, or, uh, you know, it's kind of muddled, but uh, one big player in particular is uh, adding liquidity very aggressively, uh, pulling it and adding it higher and higher. Okay. And price uh, is uh, repelled by that because it's new high liquidity showing lots of demand. Okay, and uh, uh, price is kind of inching toward that 49 figure here, and we also have the uh, the aggressive uh, uh, buying uh, that uh, is combined with the aggressive behavior here with the limit orders on the uh, on the uh, bid. Okay, I still haven't tested 49 yet. Okay, I thought we'd get a test on it uh, right right in here. To be honest. Okay. All right, so uh, now we're in a new trading range, okay? And that range is gonna be defined again by those buyers and sellers, okay? Uh, here they're, they're, uh, they're in at uh, this uh, uh, 98 area now, okay? We went from 88 on up to 98, okay? 10 cent move. All right, so that's where we're showing the high liquidity here. And, uh, and these guys are starting to add and pull as well. Okay. What about on the bid side? Well, and they're still way down here. Okay. It's pretty, pretty dark in this area here. Uh, and um, uh, that's, uh, it's, it's interesting to, uh, to see this. Uh, and, uh, uh, and why is that? Because, you know, you would, you would think um, in a trending environment that uh, you, you would see high liquidity underneath all the time waiting, waiting to buy. And in fact, that it's not really the case. In fact, what you get in a trending environment, and we are trending right now, at least in this little area here, okay, uh, is, uh, uh, and here we go, okay, 49 just tested now, and here we go, continue on up, okay, 40, 49.05. Okay, so in that trending environment, right, um, uh, you usually see this kind of shadow 
uh, or lack of liquidity uh, on the uh, on the bid side if it's trending up. And what you get are you get you get retest uh, a price will come back and retest into these areas, and there's just a lack of trading. You get exhaustion. Okay, and uh, all of the volume is trading at higher highs. Okay, at the higher lows, there's very little volume trading. And that's a very, very typical of that trending environment. Okay, you can even see it here, even though we're kind of going sideways, right? I mean, there's little points here and here and here. Uh, you know, if we zoom in here, like just very little trading, okay? All right. Okay, so now we've, uh, the figure here, that was a, a, a target we were looking for earlier. Okay, we've, that's been achieved. Uh, and uh, question now is, uh, you know, what's going to, is it going to, price can accept around the figure here for a bit? Uh, or will we continue to trend? Okay, well, we, we've already uh, come back and tested where we broke from here. Okay, and I'm looking for more buyers. Okay, they should show up. If they are still uh, bullish, uh, then we should see more buyers supporting this area here because this is where they bought earlier and we're not getting that right now. Okay. In fact, uh, uh, maybe this is the, uh, uh, profit taking up into this area and, uh, we're starting to, uh, uh, come, come down, uh, and, uh, uh test, uh, lower areas here. So th now we have made here, uh, a lower high or I'm sorry, a lower low. Okay. Okay. So, um, uh, now is that is that trend potentially broken here? You know, so let's take a look. I mean, uh, there's all sorts of ways of drawing these things, uh, but if we look at it something like this, well, then we're still in the game here. Okay. Okay, and uh, and we can see there, there's some liquidity here. Okay, so uh, you know there there are buyers lining up here. Okay, they they're looking at it. Uh, and uh, what we what we're looking though for is the um, uh, those aggressive buyers here to to show up. Okay, uh, you know that limit order book to get aggressive and those buyers to get aggressive. Hit the market buy button and charge up into some of these areas. Okay, first stopping point would be the figure. Okay. Let's see if they're still interested here. Okay. All right. So uh, we now this what we just kind of watched and un, unfold here. Um, it, you know, in in this kind of trending environment is really really quite typical. Like. Uh, uh, they were getting a little more aggressive here, I would say, at that 88 level. Um, and that's uh, usually uh, you don't quite see that. And, and then even here, maybe um, a little more aggressive uh, as well. In the trending environment, you'll see that longer term liquidity just sits here. It just waits. Uh, they don't they don't want to, um, uh, you know, they don't they don't uh, lower the uh, offer uh, kind of like in this area here. Uh, and. Uh, uh, you know, the, that liquidity will just stay here and the market knows it can trade there. So these these areas, it, that longer term liquidity act as targets, okay, because the market knows it can trade there uh, because these guys have so far shown that they mean business. They want to trade there, okay. So, um, uh, and uh, uh, that's that's why you can, you can see here, high liquidity, high liquidity, big dots, uh, lots of transactions, and then on the on the downside, the, the lower highs, uh, you can see the um, uh, usually uh, a, a lot less uh, volume and activity. Okay. Okay, and that's uh, an in question here. Uh, maybe at this point, uh, at the you know you can see the uh, larger transactions at a lower high here. I'm sorry, a lower low. Okay. All right. So let's uh, take a zoom out here and, and take a look at what's what's going on here. 
more or less a bigger picture. Okay. Bigger picture is, uh, you know, kind of all over the place. Uh, you know, it's been, uh, uh, we see these kind of trends and then they break uh, and then uh, they break again and then nice flush through here and then right back up uh, to where we were and then break to new highs. Okay, so it made a new low down here and it made a new high up here. Okay, so it's kind of all over the place today. But still, I mean, the microstructural stuff here is holding quite nicely for us. Okay. Okay. This this trend line is uh, it's kind of it's kind of toast. I think we can get uh, we can get rid of that. Okay. Yeah, no, good point. Yeah, um, uh, Francisco, the, the uh, 1053 exhaustion uh, area. Um, let's see here. Hold on just a minute. Okay. Um, So, uh, well, anyway, you can see that there's still opportunities uh, within these uh, microstructural areas uh, very clearly, very objectively. I mean, uh, you know, we're, we're going through a process here to very objectively read it, um, and then we anticipate uh, what might unfold, okay? So, uh, and we can see that, uh, and, um, uh, you know, and anticipate the uh, that 49 target uh, up in this area here, and, and here we go again. Right. Okay. That's the, the target we were we were just talking about over here. Okay. We're right in this area here, we were talking about it. And and they were they you know that's where that auction was taking place. Okay. And again, same pattern. Okay. So these guys came in with that uh, a shorter term liquidity, skew the book, uh, and uh, and lift the offer with the aggressive buying. Okay. Right into forty nine. All right. So um, uh, to be to be determined, uh, it's looking good. Looks like it. Uh, let's see if we can break the high here uh, and come up into this uh, higher area of liquidity up here uh, at around uh, 07 or so. Okay. Okay. I I don't know. Um, I mean, we see the transactions here, but we did not come up and test it yet, and that's not so uh, so bullish. Uh, there's another uh, clue here uh, in the order flow uh, that is not so bullish either, uh, and that is higher liquidity here uh, down at these lower areas. Okay, so um, uh, you know that that's that's start. This is starting to show something different. Okay, even even with these guys at 88 in this area here, uh, and uh, even if they were getting more aggressive down here as well, it was still above the high. Okay, this is below the high, right? So uh, that's a distinction here, okay? Um, and um, uh, we'll, we'll just see if the, the sellers start to get more interested now, okay? And less buying interest. And uh, now, so we'll, we'll, what will we be looking for? We're looking for then uh, one of the scenarios that might unfold here, okay? Now, there's there are many here. They, you know, we might see a flush through the upside here as well. Uh, but, uh, you know, what we'll be looking for is high liquidity underneath here, very aggressive, uh, and then uh, those buyers to show up uh, with aggressive buying to charge price up into that area. All right. Now, if the sellers start to get aggressive, uh, we're going to see them lower their offer, uh, and you're going to start to see them, uh, uh, you know, the structure here, the flow is going to change. You're going to see more red start to uh, uh, creep into the chart here. Uh, uh, bigger red dots at lower lows. And at these lower highs, we're already starting to see that here. Okay, You, you see less aggressive um, uh, buying. Okay, So uh, now you, you start to piece those things together. Uh, you start to look for those targets. 48.90. Okay, That's where the liquidity is. Okay, uh, And uh, uh, let's see if... Uh, uh, you know, we uh, we get some of that. 
Uh, maybe those sellers start to start to perk up and uh, gets get interested here uh, uh, to to send price down into some of that that liquidity. Okay, so just very objectively reading this uh, and, and putting the pieces together. All right. Okay, I want to I do want to jump over and I want to look at Amazon uh, here uh, just because. Uh, uh, you know, uh, there's something here um, you're going to find really, uh, it, I mean, it looks so foreign and so different uh, just because the, the price ladder, uh, you know, the um, uh, there's so much more, uh, so many more uh, um, price levels here uh, within uh, Amazon, right? And like we, like we noticed that 15 cent here, and in, in, it's like a dollar long uh, wide here at the moment, 98, I'm sorry, it's not 98 cents. Um, uh yeah uh, 60 cents wide here right so um you know huge huge spreads uh and uh but you know it's we're over a thousand dollars now almost uh a thousand well a thousand eighty basically uh here in amazon but what is interesting here uh is something bookmap does in the heat map for you uh and this is a really really nice feature okay the um uh, notice the high liquidity down here at 78. Okay, uh, and um, I mean it makes sense as well uh, because the uh, the area here at 78. I mean it's a it's a round number. Okay, the other areas here. I mean 79, uh, 80. I uh, see a little bit maybe at 80, but not not that much. Uh, 81 clearly. You know we see traders up here at 81, uh, but. Um, uh, the, when you zoom out, uh, let me show you the setting here. So click on studies configuration. Okay. And we'll scroll down here. No, I'm sorry. It's here under heat map. Okay. And, um, we have, uh, the setting here, uh, that will, um, uh, give a filter, uh, to the, um, uh, the heat map. Okay, so if there's a smoothing filter, if I have none on here, this is what that chart looks like. Okay, I mean this is this is about as objective as you can get. It, it really is because nothing is is giving you the exact data uh, at these you know little one cent areas here uh, where how that liquidity is behaving. Okay, but it doesn't help us because we're so far zoomed out. Where this gets really helpful is we put the smoothing on uh, the the uh, auto auto filter here, and now what we've done is we um, have uh, blurred uh, these areas. Okay, with a Gaussian blur, uh, you can uh, now get insight to what these areas really start to represent. Okay, it's kind of it's kind of like aggregation in a sense, but uh, it's just done through the uh, the blurring. Okay, or you know you can you can adjust it on your own as well. You know. Uh, any way that you like, you know, it's pretty, pretty extreme here. Uh, but, uh, uh, anyway, you get the, you get the point. Uh, and what has that done for me? Well, it has very nicely marked out these areas here of liquidity. Okay. And look at how the market has behaved within them. Okay. I mean, uh, be beautiful stuff. Um, you know, so, uh, uh, we do trade through this area here, uh, by a little bit and then, uh, and then we come back. Okay, and then the buyer's ready to reload uh, right here at 78. Okay, pretty pretty nice trend, uh, trending day for uh, for Amazon from uh, 63 on up to 80. And uh, let's see, it uh, seems like we're kind of consolidating here at the moment. Anyway, any questions? Let's see, Francisco, you're on fire. I can't keep up with you. Um, let's see, all these questions here. Yeah, yeah. Charles, uh, how do you configure to see the, the dots when hovering over the dot? Okay, um, this is a good question. Uh, and then, Robert, you have another question in here. Uh, Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, Robert. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll go over that quotes counter for you. No, no, no problem. No problem at all. And we will take a look at the, uh, the ES here. Okay. So, um, 
sorry, I uh, haven't followed all these questions. So let me let me go through them all here. Um, and um, let's start with. Uh, let's see here. Okay, yeah, Charles, okay. How do I configure to show the rectangles in the uh, in the current price in the dome? Okay, so let's go back to oil. Uh, let's see, that's gold, here's oil. Okay, um, the rectangles. Uh, not sure what you mean uh, by rectangles. Uh, but um, uh, this is the best bid and offer right here, okay, in, in these two um, uh, rectangles. And there, there's, uh, there's no uh, uh, con configuration for that. I mean, uh, you might be able to change, you can change the colors for sure under settings and then color settings, okay, and you can change the buyers and sellers. Uh, but um, uh, the, uh, that rectangle is going to be here. Now, um, you know, it depends on your data feed. You guys might not have, you might have complete depth um, in uh, in these markets here. So um, uh, each, you know, right now mine is uh, showing between uh, these two white lines, uh, but uh, you know, oil and gold, uh, for example, if you're using rhythmic, you have complete depth. There is no limit to it. Uh, every price level is uh, always uh, live, okay? Um, Let's see here, and uh, well, you can can you can configure the um, uh, the bars column. Just uh, right click and then choose format chart or format column. I'm sorry, uh, and then uh, you know you can have bars and numbers, bars only. And that's about all you can do. Okay, you can extend it uh, as well. Uh, I like it um, not extended, so I can kind of gauge what's going on in current uh, current market. All right. Um, okay, uh, Digby, uh, the CO, COB, CVP, SVP, sure. So COB is current order book, okay? So this is your dome, okay? And then this this is the, the same dome here, it's just uh, graphical uh, with bars. Uh, and then um, uh, CVP, this stands for chart range volume profile, okay? So this volume profile that you see here is only for this viewable chart range. Okay, so watch watch how this changes as I zoom out. Okay, so it reflects the data that's in this chart range. Okay, SVP means ses session range volume profile, uh, and this is all of the volume since when I opened my book map. Okay, so you can start to um, uh, extrapolate and and uh, un un unravel and unfold uh, strategies uh, by using that data here. So here's my VWAP, this white line, okay, and then this white line here for these two volume profiles. And okay, so if you're uh, if you're um, looking for a reversion back to the mean, well, uh, you can see your, here's your um, your POC would be this at, at 85 or 84, uh, and then your uh, VWAP is down here a little bit below that. Okay, so if you want to wanted to fade that outside edge, okay, right above maybe 49. Okay, and then looking for a return back. Where is it going to return back to? Well, you know, uh, according to the volume profile, you're looking at your, you know, value area high, your POC, and your value area lows. Okay, and also your VWAPs. All right. So, uh, uh, or you know, looking at the, you know, maybe uh, coming to the other side of the range and, and continuing. Okay. So anyway, uh, lots of different ways of looking at this data. All right. Uh, let's see. I hope that answers your question, uh, Digby. And yeah, Francisco's just all over it, uh, looking for uh, inducing and uh, back to value POC, etc. Exactly. Uh, Charles, how do you configure? I just see the volume and hovering over the dot. Okay. Um, okay, so. Again, these dots here, uh, the way I have them set up, uh, and, and you can change that setting under studies configuration, 
Okay, and then volume dots here, and you can play around with the clustering uh, or some of the filtering here, uh, or some of the display as well. Okay, so if I zoom out, you know, I'm going to kind of uh, compress the timeline and uh, compress all those trades into a, a pie chart uh, dot that gives me kind of the overall delta of that volume activity, and then click on this tool here, show data tip, and hover over that dot, and it gives me the volume. It's on the fourth line of text there. Okay. Now, uh, if you click on the hand tool and hover over here uh, and then zoom in with your center mouse wheel and just keep uh, scrolling in, I pulled apart all that trading activity. Okay. My timeline is expanding here. And uh, now I can see what unfolded. And I still have all that data here. Okay. If I hover over the dot, it tells me date, time, on the bid, and the volume, okay? Or if I hover over maybe the uh, some of the liquidity, uh, it, it tells me here too. It gives me the date and the time, and then what was on the ask at this price level, right? I like this tool a lot. I use it frequently. Uh, I want to understand uh, sometimes the uh, representation of it. Uh, and then um, a lot of times, though, once I, once I have that feel for it, then I don't use it. Um, you know, I already have uh, understanding. Okay. 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 So, Charles, hope that answers your question. Uh, Robert, let's go over the CQC. Okay. So, now, book map here, you know, mo most of the domes out there, they they'll show a volume column or two. Um, and uh, we have volume columns and we have many other data types as well. Okay, so right click in the column and uh, and this is how it's set up here. We have, you can format the column uh, and then you can change it to session or um, uh, chart range. Uh, there's resets here. Uh, maybe we'll go over that uh, another time. But then the data types here, okay? Current order book, which is here. Uh, volume, which is already selected. Trades counter, okay? So this is giving me a column here. Now it says CTC. Okay, so this is a chart range of trades counter. These are the number of events that took place, that, that actually traded. So, you know, uh, if uh, you see this tick up by one, uh, one trade occurred, but it's not telling you for how much. Uh, it's just it's just ticking how many, the, the actual uh, event. Uh, and that can be really helpful, though, in the uh, high frequency environment, because it's about events. Uh, it's not an interest. Uh, it's, it's not necessarily about the volume, okay? Because that volume is disguised uh, in the high frequency environment. You will see uh, instead of one block trade go through for a hundred uh, contracts, you'll see a hundred individual trades go through for volume of one each. That's how they break it up. And we saw that when we zoomed in, all right? Okay. So, now the CQC, if I click here and uh, I select a quotes counter, okay? Now I have my quotes counter, okay? So this, what this is showing me here are the number of quotes that are refreshed at these price levels, right? So this is kind of like pit noise in a sense. Um, you know, it's, uh, uh, you know, interest. It, it, it is, is, it's kind of calculating the interest. It gives really nice profiles. Um, the... Um, uh, and that's because these these areas here are, are being counted as well. When it you know you see interest outside of here, you'll get your count. Okay. So uh, what um, now this these aren't contracts. Uh, it's not the the number of contracts. It's just the number of actual orders. Uh, you know the uh, so you know one trader uh, is interested in buying. Well, it might be for a hundred contracts, but it's just going to be a quote for one. All right. So uh, that's what you'll see here in this column, okay? So Robert, I hope that answers your question. Uh, how do you want, how do you bring up um, uh, Amazon? Yeah, that's through the DX feed, okay? Um, and um, uh, nice breakout here, okay, of our little range here. We saw the interest at 78. Um, anyway, the, um, uh, uh, that's with the uh, uh, book map with a DX feed. Okay, so now you don't need to get the bundle though if you don't want, right? 
you you actually um, uh, you, if you have either of these versions here, basic or advanced, uh, just log into Bookmap, uh, and then uh, you know under your Getting Started tab here, uh, you, you know if you want to, uh, the, the, you'll see it on the on the uh, on the toolbar. It'll it'll ask you to add uh, or upgrade or you know something like that. All right, and that's how you can get uh, your DX feed. Okay. All right. Uh, the ES. Okay, so let's take a look at the ES and what's going on. Okay, I'm really glad we covered oil, um, and because uh, this is just kind of crawling, uh, and a uh, lot of lot of liquidity at uh, 2480 though. That's for sure. Okay. Uh, and uh, yep. Yeah. Anyway, that's what I see. I don't see a lot of trading activity. It looks like it wants to test it. I can tell you that uh, because we continue to hang out here. And um, uh, but uh, I'm not seeing a lot of buying interest pulling up into it here. Okay, so uh, that's the 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 one uh, caveat at the moment here on the ES. Okay, some some of the uh, you can see some of the buyers are starting to raise the uh, the bid here a bit. Let's see here. Do you have regular? I have regular rectangles on the current order book. Uh, you do not. Okay, so you're talking about these here, uh, Charles. Is that right? Uh, maybe you have version five. I'm I'm uh, uh, accessing here book map uh, six point one. Yeah, okay, that's why. Uh, let's see here. CVD looks favorable uh, in the ES uh, and this, uh, yeah, here. Yeah, I mean, um, well, let's, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't necessarily say that, to be honest. Um, although I see there's, you know, this, there's a skew here in the profile. Um, you, you know, this is, this is where, uh, you know, you're going to get a lot of insight. Okay, because although you see the skew here in the profile to the upside, there's more volume trading at these higher areas, and that's good. But what kind of volume is it? That's what we want to know. Okay, so let's separate it out. So let's uh, right click here, let's format the column, and let's split out the display. Okay, and uh, and now what kind of picture do we get? Okay, and um, yeah, I, I would still tend to agree with you. Um, uh, Darcy, uh, you know, I'm, I'm still seeing a little more um, uh, buying than selling at these areas. So, uh, yeah, it, but it's, uh, it, you know, it's it's pretty evenly matched here, except for this 9,000. I, I, I do like that uh, compared to, well, it's, it's 14,000 here, but, you know, uh, the, the one tick higher there, at least there, there's more contracts trading that are buyers. Okay. All right. Anyway, so this, uh, you know, so that that's where the profile can uh, uh, be harmful, right? Uh, and uh, you you need to know what type of volume is trading here at some of these areas, okay? Uh, and uh, and that's going to give you the insight, okay? You're welcome. Uh, let's see here. Okay, I think I answered all your guys' questions. Okay, anything else? If not, uh, we're definitely over the time limit, so let's uh, let's wrap it up. We'll call it a day. Thanks for coming, and um, if you want to give Bookmap a try, that four, you get that 14-day trial period, uh, and try it out, and uh, attend these webinars, and uh, ask questions, and uh, you guys will be up and running here. All right. So uh, yeah, thanks for coming. We'll do it again tomorrow. See you then.